Hello everybody, this is Tim here again. Here with my review for the new Arnold Schwarzenegger film, Maggie. Uh, just recently watched it. Just to jump straight into the film here. Uh, the film stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Abigail Breslin, the, the girl from Little Miss Sunshine, as she's better known. Um, and Jolie Richardson, I believe, is the actress's name that plays the stepmother in the movie. <clears throat> but just give my rating for the film right up front. I'd give the film three stars out of a possible four. Uh, the film is good. It's not great, but I do feel that it's good. Uh, it's more of an art house type movie. It's very slow paced. It's a it's a, definitely a drama. This is not an action movie. If you're expecting an action style Schwarzenegger movie, you're going to be very disappointed. If you want to see Schwarzenegger's taking out zombies left and right, this is not your movie. Don't even waste your time. Um, but if you're looking for like an art art artsy type drama movie, like this movie has a very depressing look to it. Like an old photograph type look to it that looks that complements the movie really well. Um, the film is directed by Henry Hobson, I believe, who did uh, like the opening for the video game The Last of Us. So this makes sense that this is a film that he would direct, <laughs> judging from the story in this movie. But uh, when the movie first starts out, you get Abigail Breslin, who's already been bit by a zombie. We uh, really don't know why she was in the city at the beginning of the movie. Maybe she got bit went to the city to pick something up or something or whatever. It's not really important. Um, but uh, pretty much in this movie, you get, if you in this movie if you get bit by a zombie, the infection takes a long time to completely turn you into a zombie, which is really why in the movie the zombies haven't like took over the world because you got plenty of time to dispose of someone if they're turning into a zombie. I mean, you got like a week and a half. But uh, so she starts, you know, she's been bit. She's gonna turn into a zombie. She got bit somewhere in the city. <clears throat> so the government has this thing where you gotta take the person once they get bit to quarantine where they just get thrown in a, I guess like a corral or something like that and they start eating on each other and then the government kills them with some kind of lethal injection type thing or something I don't know something like that but um Schwarzenegger doesn't want to do that he wants to keep her around as long as he can because Schwarzenegger's got a new woman now his original wife died and this is the only kid he had by her so he's got a very strong attachment to her because it's his only actual kid. I mean, there's two other kids that the woman has, but they're not Schwarzenegger's kid in the movie. Um, I don't think, anyway. I'm pretty sure they're not. If they are, they didn't mention it, but she's pretty much his only blood kid, so he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to kill her. and doesn't want to own up to the horribleness of the situation. Doesn't want to admit to it. I mean, really. I mean, doesn't want to face it, I would say. I mean, he knows what's going to happen, but he doesn't really want to face it. And you got these two cops that keep showing up. One of them is a dick. He's pretty much a stock character. He's a douchebag. He keeps wanting Schwarzenegger to take Abigail Breslin into the quarantine and just get it over with. He obviously has no emotions for some reason. But anyway. So you got one stock character that's a little bit of a mark against the movie who's just an asshole to be an asshole. Um, uh, you get some really dramatic scenes in this. I mean, you get some really good drama scenes in this movie that uh, have a nice little heartbreakingness to it. I mean, I didn't cry when I watched the movie, but I felt it starting to come out. But, you know, I, I choked it back. But, uh, yeah, this is a film that definitely get you a little bit uh, worked up emotionally. Like Abigail Breslin's boyfriend in the movie, he's, you know, been bit too. And he's turned, dying and turned into a zombie too. Um, and then uh, they got, he's at his house. And his dad's trying to force him out of the house with a shotgun because he's like, he's starting to crave human flesh or whatever. And so the police have to show up and drag him out of the house. And he's like, no, Dad, no. <laughs> Which that's a good dramatic scene. That's good. Uh, I don't know the name of the actor who plays her boyfriend in the movie, but he did. He did good. Um, one thing I thought was cool in the movie is Abigail Breslin's body's like rotting away, and her friggin' like uh, her finger uh, starts rotting, and it gets like she falls. She has an accident or something like that, and like breaks it somehow. I think it might have been her pinky finger or her first finger. I'm not sure, but she goes into the like the bat the kitchen and just cuts it off. It's like dang. <laughs> Then she goes off running into the woods, and she runs into, like, these two other zombies. One of them's, like, an older man, and, well, not, like, a really old man, but, like, a grown man, and the other one's, like, a little kid, his daughter or whatever, like, a young girl. And Schwarzenegger goes out there, and he has to kill them both. But, like I said, the violence in the movie is actually not very violent at all. Schwarzenegger hits one with an axe, but it's so quick, you barely see anything. And then he kills the little girl zombie off camera, and you find out that pretty much that guy... His daughter uh, was turned into a zombie too, and he didn't want to kill her, so he just went in the room with her and let her turn him into a zombie. 
and like the guy's wife shows up and she you think she's gonna shoot Schwarzenegger or she might try to because he killed uh, her husband and their daughter or whatever when they turned into zombies. But she doesn't. She just makes him take her take her out there to where the bodies are. So a decent emotional scene. The acting in the movie is fine. This is Schwarzenegger's second best performance to me. My favorite Schwarzenegger performance will pretty much always be Terminator 2. Terminator 2 is my favorite Schwarzenegger performance, not just because uh, he made you care about a machine in the movie who was the bad guy in the first movie, and not just because that movie is his best movie, but also because that movie was built upon by Terminator 1 as well. So that alone makes Terminator 2 my favorite performance of his. But this movie would be like would be second place. This would be second to to that role. <sighs> this like the if you're this movie is a drama first of all. First and foremost, this is a drama with horror elements. This is not a horror drama. It's a drama with horror elements. It has a little bit of horror elements. To be honest, the girl could have been dying in the movie of any disease. It didn't really have to be a zombie disease. But by making it like a zombie, you know, epidemic or virus or whatever, that makes it a little bit cooler. And it doesn't hurt the movie. It, just ma it makes it still interesting. But if you're like hungry for some gore or something like that, and I'm a horror fan, so I like my gore too, but if you're expecting that in this movie, you're going to be disappointed. But if you go into this movie knowing what it is beforehand, a drama, um, <clears throat> a, a straight drama, uh, an artsy type looking movie that's a straight drama that uh, has a, like a little bit of a horror element to it, then you'll enjoy it as a drama because that's what it is. In my opinion, you'll enjoy it. But, um, so, yeah, she starts deteriorating away. Another thing is that the beginning of the movie is a little bit too slow-paced because you get, like, her looking around, spying on her parents or whatever, her stepmom and her dad, played by Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger's character in the movie is, like, Wade, Wade Breslin, I think. Um, she's, like, spying on them as they're, like, talking about what they should do with her or whatever, and Schwarzenegger's, like, <laughs> these, the two cops keep showing up in the movie, and Schwarzenegger's, like, man, you go back a long time, man, but... She's my daughter, and if anybody comes here to try to take her, he's like, you know, shit's going to hit the fan. <laughs> but, uh, so he pretty much keeps her in the movie. I mean, she pretty much stays normal for 90% of the movie, really. Um, you get one cool scene I really like when it's just a stepmom at home with, uh, with Abigail Breslin, and she's starting to, she smells something that smells good, to, like she wants to eat, and uh, she thinks that Schwarzenegger's down there cooking in the kitchen, and the stepmom goes down there, and she doesn't see him anywhere. And then she realizes that it was Abigail Breslin was like smelling her. She was wanting to eat her. She thought she tasted good. I like that scene. That was cool. Um, you also get this scene where Abigail Breslin like eats a friggin' fox out in the woods or whatever. You don't get to actually see it, but she comes. You know she does because she comes right up to it and then it cuts away. So you know she ate it um, or ate on it at least. So, uh, she comes back to the house. She's got like blood all over her mouth, and everybody starts freaking out. Schwarzenegger and the stepmom think she killed somebody, but she didn't. Um, Schwarzenegger goes out and kills the fox in a mercy shot. The stepmom is like, "You, you got to do the right thing. Got to take her to quarantine, Wade." And he's like, "Well, if it was one of your two kids, would you? What would would you do the same thing, or would you be saying the same thing?" So she leaves. It's not. It's not that she left Schwarzenegger in the movie, but she took the two kids, you know, to make sure they're safe. Uh, until Schwarzenegger does what needs to be done with his daughter because she's turned into a zombie. So they didn't break up. She just she just left in the movie to keep her two kids safe. And pretty much you get you get a heartbreaking scene, a really sad scene where she's like calling the she has the Abigail Breslin's character has a good relationship with the other two kids that belong to the stepmom, and they seem to really like being around each other. And after they leave, she like calls them on the phone and tells them how much she loves them or whatever. And you, yeah, you get the, you know, the say goodbye scene, basically. Um, and uh, Schwarzenegger, like, Mercy shoots the fox in the woods. It's, like, still alive, and he shoots it off camera. Uh, so, once again, the violence in this movie is, like, really toned down. It's not very violent at all, really. It really It's going more for drama and, like, a character-driven piece. So, if you like that kind of thing, you'll enjoy it. Um, you get some good scenes with Schwarzenegger and Abigail Breslin, though, like, when they're they're bonding or whatever. They're like, uh, she's talking about his vehicle, and she says, uh, why do you keep this piece of crap? And he says, so it's, he says something like, because, uh, because this piece of crap uh, keeps helping me or something. He says something like that, talking about his vehicle. It's a charming little scene, and Abigail Breslin has a nice smile, and Schwarzenegger delivers some good acting here. This is a good performance by Schwarzenegger. In my opinion, his second best performance after Terminator 2. 
He's not playing the huge, I mean, the unstoppable badass like he always does. I mean, he's a tough guy in the movie, but it's more like because he's so big, you know, and he's, <clears throat> and uh, he can still kick ass, I mean, because he's a big guy, basically. But he's not, like, unstoppable or anything. He plays, like, the vulnerability of, like, his character and how he's sad for his daughter and how he doesn't want her to be taken away from him. And so... After, uh, later on in the movie, after she ate the fox, or part of the fox, or whatever, um, she's going to sleep, and Schwarzenegger's getting prepared to execute her the next day, but he doesn't even load his shotgun, so you know that he really doesn't want to shoot her, and he just, like, falls asleep in his chair. She comes downstairs, she's almost completely a zombie, um, she walks up to Schwarzenegger, but you think she's gonna bite him, but she doesn't, she just, like, kisses, she kisses him on the forehead instead. She goes outside, Schwarzenegger hears her go outside. He loads up his shotgun, ready to go out and finish her off. Of course, he wants to try to do. He wants to try to do the right thing, to take her out, so she won't kill anybody. So he goes outside to shoot her. But before he gets a chance to shoot her, she climbs on top of the house. And this is the biggest weak point of the movie. <clears throat> she climbs on top of the house, and you see her jumping off the roof. And when you turn to a zombie in the movie, you get like black eyes. And it's a cool camera shot when she's falling off the roof. It's like face first, you know, face in view of the camera. And you can like see the reflection of the ground in her eyes because they're black, solid black, which I thought that was cool. And then she just like closes her eyes and you know that she obviously hit the ground and killed herself. And then uh, it cuts to the next, to uh, to her like last thing she sees before she dies is her as a little girl like picking flowers with her mom. So it's a really sad ending. I even like that. But one thing I hate is that the movie just like, it just bam, cuts off right there and ends. You don't get to see Schwarzenegger's reaction to her dying or anything. And in the movie he like, Shows her something that uh, after her mom died or whatever, these flowers started blooming in this one spot. I mean, it would have been a nice scene to see Schwarzenegger like bury her in the, like the flower garden or whatever, uh, bury her underneath the flowers. That's probably what you would have got. You would have got an extra scene. She pretty much kills herself, so Schwarzenegger doesn't have to do it uh, or won't have to or whatever. <clears throat> but the whole movie's like built upon the relationship between the father and the daughter, and Schwarzenegger and her have good charisma together. And when you get to the end and it just ends with her just hitting the ground and just cuts off, it feels so, it just, it's just like, bam, it's over right after that. It just cuts off. You don't get to see Schwarzenegger find her body. You don't get to see him bury her. You don't get to see him cry over her or anything. And the relationship has really been like, you know, the crux of the movie. And it just cuts off super fast. And you're like, what the hell happened? <laughs> that shit's too quick. But anyway. Other than that, man, that's what keeps the movie from being four stars. Um, I get what they were going for. The director wanted more of like a somber ending, you know, for the character because she's had it so bad. You know, give her a little sweet, peaceful way to die. Maybe he didn't want us to see the father crying and stuff like that. But their emotional, like, bonding in the movie of those two, of the father and the daughter, is really the, the heart of this movie. <laughs> and when you just cut away from it at the main end, it's like, it's like almost a big... F you, you know, to the audience. But still, all in all, it keeps it from being four stars, but it's still a good movie. I'd give it three stars. It's a good movie. I'd recommend watching it. It's definitely one of Schwarzenegger's better films. I'd put it in his top ten films. And he does good here. Schwarzenegger does good doing drama. Um, I didn't even think he was that bad at doing drama in End of Days, really, which there wasn't a lot of drama in End of Days because it's still pretty much a Schwarzenegger action movie. It just happened to be Schwarzenegger fighting Satan. But uh, he still did. I think he did... Well, no, not not end of days, but uh, Collateral Damage. I think he did decent there with the drama, too. But this is a better performance in this movie than Collateral Damage. His family died in Collateral Damage, and he did decent with the drama in that movie, in my opinion. But in this one, he does better. This is a better performance than that movie. I also think this is a better movie than that movie as well. And I don't even hate Collateral Damage. But this is a good movie. It is a drama. Don't expect a lot of horror elements. The, the drama comes first in this movie, and it's a character-driven piece. Pretty much meaning it's got a artistic look to it. It moves at a slow pace so you can uh, get the story driven by the characters and their and what they do in the story. Um, it's not a, lot, not a lot of action, almost no action at all. Um, it's just kind of Schwarzenegger and the girl having to deal with uh, their predicament they're in. And if you're all, if you are okay with a movie like that, a more character driven piece and a slow paced movie, if you can get behind that, then you will enjoy this movie. Like I said, I'd give it three stars out of four. It's an artsy movie. I have to grade every movie based upon, you know, the, the qualifications of what each movie should, you know, bring to the table for what it's trying to accomplish. And for this movie, I'd say it's good, 
but not great. But it's definitely worth checking out. And like I said, I put it in my top 10 favorite Schwarzenegger movies. Definitely better than Terminator 3 and Terminator 4. Well, Terminator 4 don't count, and Terminator Salvation don't. He wasn't in that, except CGI. But it's definitely better than Terminator 3. And it looks like it's going to be better than Terminator 5 as well. But uh, I'll see you guys again with whatever my next review will be. But once again, I enjoyed this movie. I'd give it three stars out of four. And I'll definitely buy it on Blu-ray when it comes out.